feels like day 300 of fixing this dang tail. I'm really getting stressed out about it. It just takes so long because I need to wait for a silicone to cure. Let's start down the end and I'll show you what worked and what didn't work in our experiment on this very, very old silicone. So we did get some paint scuffs fixed that were all along the fluke. We did the best we could with this middle piece. I can see that it's, it looks like it's still broken, but it's just clear because it's still epoxy. So it's actually reinforced on both sides. We've got the center here and I just need to take a razor and get these little wee bits uh, smoothed out. That's not bad. I tried to fix the discoloration here by painting over it, but I tinted my color too thinly. So not all of it got done with the first layer. So I'm gonna have to do another layer or two in order to get this discoloration off of here. If you can see that. It's not super obvious. It kind of looks like just a regular color that's over on this end, but it is swiping and snaking right through the white. So I'm gonna try to fix that. You can't really see them anymore, but I did fix some holes along the body. And then we get to the hot mess that is this waistline. This is, has been a horrible experience. This is what I've got so far, and keep in mind that this is actually gonna get, this is gonna get cut. Like it's gonna, I'm gonna trim this. It's not, that's why it's, it's going too far because it's actually the patch. Okay, so the back is, is not looking great, but keep in mind, I'm gonna trim this down. All of this is going to be trimmed down. So it's just going to be this patch, right? I've just got this extra because it, it braces it a little bit better. We want it to be really tight. This wrinkle did not smooth out. It's old silicone that curved and I could not get it to smooth out. We've got the inside done and the outside. We've got the outside done of this. I have to do the inside still. Once both sides are done, so I have to fix these pieces here. This was supposed to get done and it didn't. It, it just, I miscalculated, so I'll have to do that piece. And then once it's all cured, I'll trim it down, try to smooth it out, and then try to blend the colors a little better. But like I said, all this extra stuff you see is actually not the waist, right? Like that's actually going to be trimmed off. It's just easier to leave it until I'm done the very end of it. So this is not ideal. You can see some of the problems I ran into with this is that the silicone stretched and warped in some places and we've got some really unkind bumps. This is like a this is like an old patch that warped when I fixed it. And so I've just literally got like this that's like a fold in the silicone. I have it on. Well, I don't think anybody's going to notice it when it's on. Because just consider that like all this stuff will be trimmed. It's not going to look like this ratty thing. I am going to have some kind of a belt or something too. The thing about this is I need it to be functional. I need it to be structurally sound. I need to be able to pull this on without pieces coming out. And what you see here, this big patch that I fixed here, that last time I put it on, just pulling the tail up, it ripped right down into the scales and when I wore it you could see my bathing suit bottoms from that rip so it went all the way down there and of course the colors aren't right either it's been a really stressful experience I'm not a tail maker but even if I was a tail maker dragon skin silicone would not work for this it, it, we, we tested it I, I sent it to my friend Amanda and she tested it and it didn't work you can, we tried, I, I've said in other videos, we tried some really expensive chemical reactor that is supposed to wake up the silicone. It's so old that that didn't work. They, they called Smooth On, bounced some ideas off them, tried all their ideas, nothing worked. So when I say this is like a last resort, it is a very last resort. We just need this tail to get through two days of shooting, just two days of shooting. The first day is all dry land stuff, I'm going to be sitting a lot in poses like this, so it's going to put stress on that waistline because I'm going to be shifting around and it's so low waisted that it's going to be below my hips, so it's going to be at a stress point. The second day, I'm swimming and it should be all right when I'm swimming because I'm, I'm not going to be in these weird bendy positions. I'm just going to be straight, so it should be okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to flip it over, I'm going to put my mask on and I'll show you. I'm gonna to try to do this inside layer and I'm gonna to try to fix this, this one thing. Ideally then, in a couple hours, that'll cure and I can trim this down and then I can finally do 
maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow, the last layer of trying to paint everything and smooth everything out on both sides. It might take me one more day. I don't know, it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday we film and it has to be cured on Friday night in order for it to be safe to film on Saturday. Although Saturday I won't be swimming in it, so it should be actually okay then. I didn't intentionally leave it last minute. I had it with my friend for a few months who was experimenting on everything she could possibly try. So otherwise I would have done it myself a few months ago. That's just what happens. Keep in mind, I've had to have this set up in my apartment now for days, which is really stressful. I wish we had a garage or a basement. People have left me nasty comments in the roommate community saying, why doesn't she have a house? Those people do not understand what it's like in Canada and what it's like to have a thousand dollar a month heating cost. That's what it's like to heat your house here. Plus, we get snow like eight months of the year, and that is a lot of shoveling, which takes up a lot of your time. And that's just not something that Sean and I have time for right now. We have a lot of other responsibilities and a lot of places where our money needs to go, and a thousand dollars for heating is not one of them. <laughs> so eventually, I will hopefully live in a house, but I don't have time for all the stuff that goes with the house right now. And this is the trade-off. You have to turn your living room into a mermaid repair studio. One thing I can't repair in this tail is that the foot pockets are broken. They were sold to me broken. That's why we don't do a lot of gigs with this tail even before this problem happened because we couldn't, we can't swim in it. Like there's just, it's all right for slow moving stuff and, and film and looking pretty, but for speed, we talked about this in another video. For the uh, Aquatron study that we did for speed, this was this tail was actually slower than people swimming with their bare feet. That's how slow it was. So yeah, I don't need to pigment this silicone because it's just going on the inside. I am gonna try to brace this and I might actually get Sean to do the trimming of it later and film it because I do have dyspraxia, which means that I struggle with fine motor stuff, which is another reason why I find this so frustrating. You see how sloppy it is? That's not intentional. That's me working as hard as I can. I just have very poor coordination. It's never gonna change. It's not a matter of effort. It's not a matter of laziness. It's a matter of brain motor function, just a disability. So you might have better luck than me because you might be much more skilled with your hands. This is a last resort kind of thing. You don't, you wouldn't want to have to do this. I think I noticed too that this dorsal needed some fixes. Maybe I already did it. On the other side? I guess it's all right. All right, so I'm gonna put my mask on and we'll get Sean to show you a little bit of what I'm doing and then we'll switch to the uh, time lapse. All right. I'll try to be loud and announce the week because it's hard to hear me with this thing on. I'm actually not going to use the varicella on the inside, I think. I think we're going to let it be thick. I've got to get all of this and I've got to fix, I've got to fix this little spot. It's kind of like Darth Vader already. I'm going to have to do that. I've gone through two of these now. Maybe just a little verifier. This is where the smell comes from. Now this is a type that can be used indoors or in enclosed places. It actually says on it that it can be used inside. Keep that in mind if you're stuck like me. <laughs> The real test is going to be at the end of this video trying it on, making sure we can get it on. I want to do that before the filming in case it breaks, in case it doesn't work and it breaks. 
Sean and I will need to fix it if that happens. going to hold up before I paint it and smooth it out and make it all nice because I only have really one and a half more days to work on this with for it to have enough time to cure before we have to use it in the film so if let's say it's gonna break right here at a, at a stress point I need to know that now so that I can still keep trying to reinforce it because I'm just if I wait and it breaks then I'm there's nothing I can do. And I just want to draw your attention, if you look at the tarp, you will see that it is totally covered with pigment and silicone, so that's why we do that. To try and put the tail on, I've got some lotion in a spray bottle here. It's gonna be goopy and not fun. The tail is mostly cured. It doesn't feel wet or anything like that. Like, it feels solid, but you just, before you use something, you definitely want to wait the full 24 hours or whatever is recommended and then what I'm gonna do once I have it on is you see it's really ratty on the ends I'm gonna get Sean once we can judge the length of it while it's on me he's gonna trim up some of those bits and then once I take it off and we know that it's good um, we're going to uh, like clean it up like a final cleanup and then Earlier I said I still need to try repainting this front part of the tail. That's kind of low on my priority list. It's not super noticeable, but it still needs to get done. I'm gonna try to do this. I'm always really careful with waistlines of tails when I pull them up. I try not to pull them up with my nails. I try to pull them up using the Tatla as a barrier. And if I can't get it myself, rather than yank and yank and yank, I actually get Sean to help me to get it up because that way I'm not gonna damage it because a lot of waistline damage happens to a tail from it being rolled down and rolled up or pulled too hard. But this tail used to be so easy for me to get into, but you might have noticed I'm a little fluffier lately and that's because back in November I had to change my endometriosis medication and that came along with a bit of a weight gain and water weight and squishiness. So I'm trying to get used to that and it's been a bit of a pain in the butt, but that's life. I'd rather have a healthy uterus than be skinny anyway. <laughs> Alrighty. All right guys, it's not perfect. It's a quick and dirty job but I got a couple more inches to the waist. My top is gonna overlap with it, and I'm gonna have a fishnet built. So, not perfect, but I mean, from what I started with, it's functional, right? We'll clean her up a bit more, try the heck to get out of it. It's just the problem of trying to put it on dry. We're renting a cottage, and I think I'm gonna have to get into a bathtub. <laughs> get the tail good and wet, get me good and wet and soaked up. Cause I poured a ton of water in this and lotion and it's already bone dry. It's been absorbed into the neoprene, it's been evaporated. So that's the problem with these types of tails. So anyway, this is my quick and dirty fix. And hopefully we can show you a little bit of behind the scenes of the filming so you can see how it works. But I'm happy with it. 
it doesn't look great, but I don't think when I put everything together, people are going to notice. Maybe it's going to work. Spending three days of work and probably one more day of little touch-ups, and I think it's going to be ready just in time. Ta-da! Alright, thank you so much for checking out this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, click the bell. Check me out on patreon.com slash mermaid. We have a special going on right now that if you sign up at the $10 level, you're going to get a bonus extra perk, which is a keychain. $10 level or higher, and if you're already a Patreon lower than $10, if you up it to $10 before June 1st, you will get the keychain as well. And everybody who is already a Patreon and is $10 or higher is going to get it. So you have to join by June 1st to get the keychain. So best wishes and thanks so much. Ha, 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 ha.